Hello there. Welcome to Sean Academy. Today in this video we're going to learn how to start a storage unit business. My name is Sarah and I will be your instructor in this video. Before we start a storage unit business, let's take a closer look at what goes into starting one and how we can make yours profitable. People can store their personal belongings in self-storage facilities without the hassle and clutter of doing so at home. These companies also serve other businesses that require storage space for equipment such as office supplies, furniture, and other items. The desire to store and forget about items, as well as a lack of space in homes and offices, are the driving forces behind self-storage businesses. Let's look at the costs of starting a self-storage business. According to research, it is critical to budget 25% to 30% of the total development project budget for land acquisition. If land costs $1.25 per square foot and coverage can be extended to 40% of the job site, the land cost for the building would be around $3.13 per rentable square foot. A single-story building costs between $25 and $45 per square foot to construct. Construction costs for a multi-story building range from $42 to $70 per square foot. A business person who wants to open a new self-storage facility must have the financial clout or investor support to finance the land purchase and construction costs. Typical projects require $2 to $3 million in financing, with a 10% to 20% down payment. A storage unit's monthly expenses include loan debt service, staff expenses, maintenance, marketing expenses, utilities, security expenses, and insurance. Your target market is those who have a longer-term need for storage, such as a military member on active duty outside of the United States, and who can pay for the monthly rental using an automatic payment method, such as a monthly credit card payment or an electronic fund transfer from a bank account. A 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot space is the most popular storage size, with the best customers renting one for up to two years or more. Monthly rental collections, auction proceeds from past due accounts, fees and sales of related products such as moving supplies and locks are all sources of income for a storage unit owner. In addition to the standard rental fee structure, these businesses profit from administrative fees, lost key fees, lock removal services, late fees, and other fees. Some companies charge a premium for the rental of climate-controlled storage units. Others provide insurance for the contents of items stored in a storage space for an additional monthly fee. You can add moving truck rental services, moving equipment, and supplies to your storage unit business to make it more profitable. Many self-storage facilities also manage a fleet of rental trucks, vans, and moving trailers, such as those provided by national franchises such as U-Haul or Budget. These businesses can coexist or operate as a single entity. In addition to moving vehicles, moving equipment for rent includes furniture dollies, furniture pads, and hand trucks. Moving supplies such as packing tape, packing supplies, and moving boxes may also be sold at the rental office. One option is to purchase an existing self-storage facility. Prices for purchasing an existing facility vary as much as the self-storage facilities themselves. As you might expect, an existing self-storage facility in New York City, New York, will likely sell for tens of millions of dollars whereas an existing facility in rural Iowa will likely sell for less than a million dollars. It is important to hire an experienced self-storage broker to assist you in finding and eventually purchasing a facility. A seasoned broker understands the market and how to negotiate the price. If you intend to run the facility, you will want to buy a facility in the area where you live. It doesn't matter where the facility is if you'll be handing over operations to a third-party management company. Just make sure you and your broker understand the local market. Here are some considerations to make when constructing storage units. What will the unit mix be? If the facility is in a trade area dominated by apartment renters, you may want to include more small units, such as 5x5 five five or 5x10. Five However, if the trade area's residents are mostly homeowners, more 10x10 10 10 and 10x20 units may be necessary. Should the facility only have drive-up units or only units with indoor access? Should there be a mix of drive-up and indoor units? The answers are determined by the trade area's demographics. 
Should only climate-controlled units be available or should non-climate-controlled units be available? Or should there be a mix of the two? This decision will be influenced by the local climate as well as your construction budget. Should you limit the facility to a single structure? Or will there be enough space, and does it make sense, to spread the units across multiple buildings? The configuration of the facility will be influenced by the amount of available land as well as the anticipated demand. Should space be set aside for boat, RV, and other vehicle storage? The answer is dependent, in part, on market research indicating the number of boat, RV, and vehicle owners in the trade area. Should you consider converting an existing structure into a self-storage facility, such as a closed retail store? Several self-storage developers have successfully converted and used and frequently overlooked spaces into tax-generating, job-creating storage facilities. If you found this video useful, please show your appreciation by clicking the like button. Also, let us know in the comments if you'd like us to make a long, comprehensive follow-up video to learn more about how to start a storage unit business. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button to see more videos from Sean Academy. An extension for education.